tell you that I love you. Hey, hey, you guys, what is up? I'm Vanessa, and welcome back to my channel, and welcome to Sunday and another What's for Dinner, where I share with you guys some of the meals my blended family of six and I had throughout the week. Now, this week, we shared a couple HelloFresh meals, some really exciting things like burger bombs, and the most amazing poke cake we have ever had. I tell you, mama, I tell you, papa, too. So right off the bat, I am making cheeseburger bombs, which are basically taking biscuit dough and wrapping it with ground beef and cheese. And you're gonna wanna season your ground beef with some Worcestershire sauce and some Dijon or straight up mustard, whatever you guys have in the fridge is perfectly fine. Salt and pepper. And then we're gonna cover the biscuits before we bake them with some melted butter, poppy seeds, and sesame seeds. You guys, it doesn't get any simpler, but I am telling you, this is a family favorite. I wanna let you know season it straight up with some salt and pepper and I decided to add some dried chopped onions because I didn't want to put whole onions in these where I was going to have our kids eating them and then you can put as little or as much Worcestershire and mustard as you like. Whatever I want when I want it. Whatever, whatever. Man. Deep inside So really quick backstory on my idea for these. I have seen these kind of bouncing around Pinterest and other YouTubers. I saw Kat over at Southern Farm and Kitchen do some Italian meatball bombs. And then I just saw Tasty do their version of this. And this is pretty much bang on with the Tasty video. If you guys want to check that out, they have a lot of hacks to do with country biscuits. Basically, you guys are going to take each biscuit, roll it out. I used a little bit of flour just to simplify my life and I didn't want to deal with any sticking. You're going to put about a heaping tablespoon of ground beef in the center with some uh, cheese any type you like shredded uh, processed American whatever you want I just have some sliced cheese here that I'm gonna put on and I'm just gonna seal them up and you're gonna see at the end a little technique I'm just gonna kind of give it a good twist and pat it in so it creates kind of like a little uh, uh, I don't know what I'm trying to say like a little one of those little steam buns do you know what I'm trying to say somebody help me in the comments yeah, I really hope you love me too. things these little steam buns anyway this is kind of what you want it to look like you want it to be relatively sealed up so that you don't have any oozing my ground beef was super lean so that was not an issue I went ahead and melted a couple tablespoons of butter with some poppy seeds I threw some sesame seeds in with the butter but you're gonna see in a minute I'm gonna hit them again with a good little uh, pinch of sesame seeds just because I want to kind of give it that hamburger feeling and I baked these in the oven at 375 for 20 minutes until they were nice and golden brown Now, originally I was gonna serve some leftover pasta as a side, which you will see in my next meal, but everybody wanted to try these new spicy fries that I had from President's Choice. So we threw them in the air fryer, and I'll tell you, if you're here in Canada, they were amazing. A little bit more kick than the McCain spicy fries, but really, really good, and they crisped up perfectly in the air fryer. Now, can we just have a moment for a round of applause for these beautiful cheeseburger bombs. You could put anything in these, you guys. You could do ketchup, mustard, and you could add some pickles in there, onions. You can do anything you want. You could add, make little pizza bombs out of these with pepperoni and cheese and sauce. Really, the possibilities are endless. And I just wanted to show you guys really quickly what they looked like in there. And I probably could have stuffed them a little bit more, but honestly, these were perfect for us. We don't like to go too, too crazy on the meat. And we just serve these up on the side and with any of the fixings anybody wanted. If you wanted to throw a piece of lettuce around it, you could do that too. I told you if we dance in the blizzard, we are not getting cold. So keep on dancing, baby. Dance, 
then just a hint, we ended up with about two of these left and they heated up really well in the microwave. I just dipped it in some ketchup and mustard and I'm telling you, you guys, this is something that I think you could make ahead and freeze and it could easily be something that your kids could heat up at school for lunch or you could heat up for them, throw it in a thermos because it's relatively small and it'd still be warm by lunchtime. So I feel like now that I'm on YouTube, well not now, I've been on for over a year now, but I feel compulsed to just cook all of the deliciousness I see. And when you see one YouTuber to do it, the next thing you know, you see 10 do it. Well, if you haven't seen the Olive Garden creamy chicken pasta going around YouTube, I don't know where you've been, but basically you throw all of these delicious ingredients into your crock pot, cook it on high for six or seven hours or more or less if you need to, and it's going to be delicious, you guys. So I'm taking two completely frozen chicken breasts, throwing them in the bottom of my foodie. I have a Ninja foodie. It works as a slow cooker as well. I've talked about this before. It's amazing. I actually have a video coming on this and I'm super psyched. So one whole bottle of salad dressing, a quarter cup of grated Parmesan cheese. You're gonna add as much pepper as you like. Now, if you notice there, my dressing was an Olive Garden. That has been a struggle to find here in Canada, at least on the East Coast where I am right now. So this is kind of like my version of the recipe telling you if you could do it without Olive Garden dressing. I'm also gonna throw a block of cream cheese right on the top and we're gonna set it on high for six hours. And like I said, this is gonna be a bit of a test. Is this gonna work out without the Olive Garden? Well, you already know it is, cause guys, this is bomb. Do it. When I'm worth it, cause I'll slip into the dreams tonight. Oh, so give me some baby, I'll take it, I'll take it to Mars, oh. Leave a comment down below. If I have Alfredo or any sauce like this, I need broccoli. It doesn't have to be in it, but I need it on the side. And since I knew that my household didn't really want it in it, I left it on the side and steamed a little bit for myself. Now I went ahead and cooked up some um, bow tie pasta. You could use penne or linguine would be really good. You don't wanna cook it in here. You're gonna pour it in when you're ready to eat. Look at this, you guys. I am using my Pampered Chef masher and it is perfect for shredding up this chicken. Stir it together till it looks like this. Spoon in your pasta and don't be worried if some pasta water gets in there, you want that. The starches in the water from your pasta are gonna help thicken your sauce and make it a little extra creamy. And you'll actually see in a minute here, I'm gonna take a little extra on a wooden spoon and pour it in just so that it makes it a little more cohesive. Oh, I'll stick like glue inside your mind. Just watch me break in This was amazing, and this was no, knee, no name Italian dressing, you guys. I cannot wait to replicate this again with the Olive Garden dressing. If anything, I can say it's like the chicken kind of melted in and became cohesive and part of this whole sauce. So it was like a sneaky way of putting chicken in the pasta and my kids didn't even really notice it. I topped mine with some grated Parmesan and some pepper. fresh. I'm sorry, I had to do that. I was thinking it in my head right before I started this voiceover. All right, you guys, you have seen me talk about HelloFresh before. This is not sponsored. I've never been sponsored by anybody at any time. Basically, I love Hello Fresh. I used to get it once a month and then we took a little bit of break of a break for a little while and I am back on you guys because I saw three recipes I wanted to try this week and here's the first one. These roasted chicken and cheese flautas, which are kind of like a taquito, I guess. I don't know too much about the differences and all of the different um, Mexican inspired dishes, but by all means, please let me know down below because I don't know. All I know is I love to devour them. So the first thing we're gonna do in this Hello Fresh Fresh meal, as I showed you there, the card shows you all the directions, step by step, have no fear, HelloFresh is here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is season the chicken. So all I did was open the package, season the one side, I will flip it into a pan with about a tablespoon of oil, um, the seasoning side down, and then I'll season the other side. And you'll notice that one chicken breast is substantially larger than the other, but the width is still the same. Often 
when we're making chicken breasts, we're really quick to just annihilate them on the stove top. And one thing I like about HelloFresh is the tips that it gives you. And the best way you guys to get a juicy chicken breast is to sear it in a frying pan and finish it in the oven for 20 to 25 minutes at around 4 or 425. These chicken breasts came out incredibly juicy. Now, I am just going to go ahead and juice this lime because we are going to make a lime crema or basically sour cream and lime juice. Um, I didn't have a zester. Ideally, I would have zested it as well. Now, I do not have a juicer, but you saw there, I just use a pair of tongs and that works out just as well. Though, Mama's hoping Santa's going to treat her to a juicer this year, maybe even a zester. All right, so my chicken is good to go. I am going to go ahead and slice it up into bite-sized pieces. I'm just sticking a face cloth or a dishcloth underneath my cutting board to stop it from rolling around. sure what was in that seasoning you guys but it tasted amazing I'm gonna have to google that all right so here I have all of my chicken in the bowl it says to empty this little tomato sauce packet with a quarter cup of water which I guess creates a little bit of a tomato sauce half of the Monterey Jack cheese and stir it all together and the heat from the chicken kind of melts that cheese and created kind of this thick paste or a sauce to go ahead and spoon into our tortillas now all I can say is these are the nicest tortillas I have ever had in my entire life. They were so soft and delicious. I don't know, but the ingredients were bang on. Again, not sponsored. I paid for this with my very own money. So put as much or as little as you like. I knew how many of us I wanted to feed this night. So I wanted to have about two or three per person and we were four people. So I tried to get out eight or nine of them. I ended up with nine. They actually sent me with like 12 tortillas, but I, I would have had very skinny flautas if I did it that way. So basically spoon it in and you're going to see what I'm going to do with my fingers is I'm going to take my fingers, separate them and kind of pull it tightly as you curl it over the chicken to pull it to the edge and roll it tight and then just put them all tightly together on a baking tray lined with some aluminum foil. I'm going to top it with the rest of that Monterey Jack cheese, but you guys know that it's not enough cheese for me. So I'm going to go ahead and hit it with some Tex-Mex and I just throw these under the broiler and it took like three or four minutes, you guys. They were browned, golden and delicious. I'm tired of being no one. Something you said on a way, yeah. These were a huge hit, you guys. Amazing. Definitely going to recreate these. Again, something I love about HelloFresh is this is a super simple meal that I know I can duplicate. Alright guys, so this next one was influenced by many YouTube videos. My friend Stephanie L, Tiffany over at Large Family Love. I have been seeing scalloped potatoes and potatoes au gratin. So I kind of threw this together as my own version of a triple layer cheesy potato slow cooker bake. I don't know, call it what you want, but it's amazing. You're going to need potatoes, any kind will do. I'm going to use some chicken broth, some shredded cheese. You're going to use some ground beef. You're going to want to make a little bit of a seasoning mix. I'm using salt salt, pepper, paprika, uh, garlic powder, and parsley. Now that seasoning combo is something I saw on my friend Stephanie's channel. I will link her video below if you wanna see exactly how she made these, but let's go ahead and get into how I'm making them. So first up, I am slicing a medium onion in these kind of half moon shapes, cause I'm gonna kind of separate them and layer them with the potatoes. Now you could do more or as little as you'd like. I actually only did this many because I am dicing one up right now now to cook with my ground beef. I figured it can't hurt. Beef and onions just taste good together. So like I said, I did go ahead with the seasoning combo that I saw on Stephanie's channel just because it really appealed to me. So you're gonna use one teaspoon of paprika, a teaspoon of dried parsley, 
about a quarter teaspoon of dried garlic powder and about a teaspoon of salt. Now it did say a quarter teaspoon, I believe, of pepper, but we are big lovers of pepper, so I put more like three quarters of a teaspoon. Go ahead and combine that and set it to the side. Now, I feel like I'm talking a lot in this one, you guys. So my ground beef was a little bit frozen. I'm just gonna slap a lid on it and set it to the side and kind of let it thaw. While that's happening, I'm going to slice up my potatoes fairly thinly because you're gonna wanna layer these and you wanna make sure they're at least even if nothing else. Now I'm gonna take a second here and check on my ground beef and I threw in those diced onions and I'm just gonna make sure it's cooked all the way through. All right, so prepare for a cheddar cheese avalanche here, but I probably have roughly two or three cups of medium, similar to sharp cheddar cheese. Now this is the insert for my Ninja Foodie. You guys know I love to use this as my slow cooker. If nothing else, my other slow cooker burns everything. This one, you guys, burns nothing. It's uh, amazing. Stay tuned. Like I keep saying, I have a Ninja Foodie, all of the things you need to know about your foodie video coming out during Vlogmas. All right, so here we go. You're gonna layer some potatoes. You're gonna put down some onions, sprinkle a third of your seasoning, because with me, I'm doing three layers. You could do two if you had a bigger crock pot. And then you're gonna go ahead and sprinkle your ground beef and your cheese, and you're gonna repeat this three times. Now, I was running low on shredded cheddar, so I topped it up with a little bit of Velveeta, and I'm gonna go ahead and cook this on high for about four hours. Now, one more thing, that broth, you're gonna take about a half a cup of chicken or beef it's totally up to you guys and just pour that right over the top slap your lid on it and forget about it Now on this night, we did have a Boston cream poke cake, which I'm gonna show you guys right here. And then I will show you what this slow cooker dinner looked like at the end. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is go ahead and cook up a yellow boxed cake mix. I'm just using this Betty Crocker mix. You guys can spice it up if you want. I know there's ways you can add milk or things like that to make it fluffier. I'm just doing straight what the box says, you guys. I'm gonna haul it out, cool it off, and then we'll move on to the next step. No clue where my wooden spoon is, but that's okay. We improvised to go ahead and mix up your two boxes of vanilla pudding and pour it right over top the cake. Now, I think I overcooked my cake a little bit, but in my opinion, it's better if it's a little bit dry because you're really saturating it with all of this frosting and this pudding. So if you could, you could let this set for a couple hours and then pour your chocolate frosting, but I'm just gonna go right at it, you guys. I went ahead and popped it in the microwave for about 20 seconds and then another 10 seconds and I was able to pour it right over the top just like this, smooth it out without disrupting the middle layer and set it in the fridge for a couple hours, cut into it, enjoy and devour. You guys, this cake is amazing. And those potatoes came out probably one of my favorite meals of this week. <laughs> So this is my second HelloFresh meal I'm gonna share with you guys this week and we are making Greek burgers. You guys, this is something you can easily replicate at home. Here's everything you're gonna need. Mayo, feta, some ground beef, buns. You're gonna need tomatoes, cucumbers, spring mix, and a shallot. So the very first thing in the list of directions is to go ahead and prepare all of your produce. One thing I 
will say here is it did say to go ahead and grate your shallot. For me, I don't like grating onions and shallots. One, I just find it messy and I don't have a very good contraption to do that. And two, it always makes me cry. So we skipped that and I just went ahead and chopped it up finely. So I'm gonna take the ground beef that HelloFresh sent me. I have some fresh oregano that I chopped up, about a quarter teaspoon of salt or a pinch of salt, which is more like an eighth of a teaspoon, but whatever. And I'm gonna add about half of those shallots that I chopped up and form two patties and slap them into a hot pan. So now we're gonna prepare, I guess, the condiment for our burger, which HelloFresh says is mayo and feta. And I won't lie, when I first started to do this, I was like, I don't think I'm gonna like this, you guys. It's so, so good. I did doctor it up with a tiny splash of hot sauce and some pepper, but it was amazing. Try this at home. Also, I am mixing together my salad. It is some vinegar, oil, and sugar. <laughs> and dress this uh, with a little bit of the condiment on each bun, some of that salad, the burger, and a slice of tomato. These were so, so good. The only thing I will say, and I told Jamie I was missing something, like, I don't know, I know it's a Greek burger, but I like something sweet. So like a fig jam or an apricot or something would have made these literally over the top. I get an ocean, we both walk the same ground. Been traveling all over. And there you have it, you guys. Another week of meals for my family and I. I hope that this gives you guys some inspiration, some motivation to just cook at home. It doesn't have to be complicated. You could even order it from HelloFresh if you wanted to. All right, guys. Take care. Love you all. And see you in my next video. The feelings come easy as we start.